Today we're going to look at the seminal track Little Fluffy Clouds by The Orb. We'll look at the samples, the synths and the secrets that went into making this classic track. So first of all, what have we got? <laughs> Over the past few years, to the traditional sounds of an English summer, a drone of lawnmowers, a smack of level on willow, has been added a new noise. Ooh, the sky. Ooh, the sky. Okay, so we've got a rooster. So I managed to get a, a rooster sample from the internet. I pitched it up one. <laughs> Sounds about the same. So then we've got a bit of spoken word. So um, after some research, I found out this is from a Radio 4 program called You and Yours and the presenter's John Waite. There's also sound of a plane going overhead and we noticed a bit of panning in the in some of the sounds here. <laughs> so the vocal sample is being panned from right to left and there's a little bit of delay on it but then we get into what were the skies like when you were young they went on forever when i we lived in arizona and the skies always had little so this is an iconic vocal sample. It was never actually released. The person speaking is Ricky Lee Jones. Her album Desert Cowboys had a, a promo edition um, with this bonus CD. It was never actually released for sale. The dawn of this track evidently was that a fan of the Orb sent them uh, a tape. And on one side was this vocal sample. And on the other side was this sound, which you will recognize from the track. Let me just play it on its own. So that is Steve Reich, played by Pat Metheny, and it is called Electric Counterpoint. So evidently, they actually built the track around this sample because it fits very nicely in the tempo and actually it, it was quite a, a skilled job they did in getting it to sink in because it's quite a kind of crazy rhythmically complex sample. So let's go back to what we've got here. So we've got... What were the skies like when you were young? They went on forever. They went on. What were the skies like when you were young? So we've got this vocal sample. And we've also got this sample called Lomo della Monica. This is Enrico Morricone. It's from the soundtrack to the film Once Upon a Time in the West. So we've basically just got the vocal sample and the harmonica sample. And there's like a sound of a plane going overhead. I didn't dig up a sample for that to recreate it, but this is my recreation. What were the skies like when you were young? They went on forever. When I we lived in Arizona, and the skies always had little fluffy clouds and all moving down. We've got two parts to this sample. We've got. So this is the very beginning of the track, but then we've got another part, which is a little bit further on. So this is my recreation of that. What were the skies like when you were young? They went on forever. When I we lived in Arizona, and the skies always had little fluffy clouds, and uh, they were long. And... An interesting thing about this track is when the synth starts to come in, it doesn't come in on a regular time, so it comes in here. Clear. There are lots of stars at night. So it's almost random when it comes in. I tried to kind of recreate it here and I had it coming in like here. Clear. There are lots of stars at night. And uh, when it would rain, it would all turn. If they were beautiful. That's a nice thing that you don't easily do nowadays in dance music. Just put things coming in at a fairly random time, not on the grid. Catch the colors so then we've got the synth sound. For this, I used the SH-101. Let's go over to the synth and have a look at how we made the synth sound. Okay, so this is quite a major part of the track, so I was keen to try and get it. Um, so I started playing, I think I read that it was with the SH-101. Kind of just sounds like... But that didn't sound quite right. 
and then I thought maybe it's a sequence going. So I programmed a little sequence and I came up with this. And a big part of it though is that with the lower notes, the filter cutoff is a lot lower. So I don't often use this actually, but I played with the keyboard tracking and got really close to the results. So here's what I got. There's also obviously that it transposes and you can do that on this synth so I can recreate it. And obviously if we put a few bit of delay on it'll sound better. But I think there's even a bit more movement, which I think is from the LFO. And it's a matter of trying to get that. So I actually sequenced the pattern into my MC707 because I wanted to be able to change the thing without having to transpose it manually. So let's play it from there. Catch the colors everywhere. So it's not bang on, but it's pretty close. I was pretty happy with that. Sometimes when you're recreating a synth sound, the tiniest adjustments, especially with this one where it seems like there's an LFO on the filter, but it's not synced. So it's it's very hard to be very precise, but I, I, I feel pretty confident that's what they use for that. So yeah, then we've also got some drums coming in. So we've just got a kick. I've used a 909 kick. I think it may have been an 808. Because it sounds a bit like it sounds a bit like if I rolled off the top end. That actually sounds a bit closer, so I think it's more something more like that. Catch the colors everywhere. That's in me because I used to look at them all the time when I was little. You know. Actually, no, that's too much. Catch the colors everywhere. The other thing to notice is that there's a slight pitch difference, so. I'm fairly sure that what happened is that the master track was actually pitched up just to make it a bit faster because everything's a little bit out of key, but it's not a whole semitone. It's like half a semitone or something. What I've done is I've just left my version. So it sounds a tiny bit out of key, but I think that's the reason for it. Catch the colors everywhere. That's in me because I used to look at them all the time when I was little. So we've just got this kick drum coming in. And then we've got um, a little bit of a shaker pattern. The shaker's panned hard to the left. We've also got a closed tap pattern that kind of comes in briefly. Catch the colors everywhere. That's in me because I used to look at them all the time when I was little. You don't see that. My shaker does sound a bit different, I'd say. Catch the colors everywhere. That's, that's an 808 shaker. Maybe it needs to be pitched down a bit, but it's close enough. And then we have some hats coming in. I used 808 hats. Catch, catch, catch. And I actually used for the open hats coming in 606 hats. So anyway. Catch the colors everywhere. That's in me because I used to look at them all. You don't see that. So then we have a fill and then we drop into the main break, the kind of the tune drops with the bass and everything. I'm quite frustrated. I couldn't find the, there's a, there's some kind of, there's a drum break basically that's used. Um, one of the drum breaks that is known is this, which is Harry Nilsson jump into the fire, which sounds like this. Um, without the EQ, it's this. It's actually a lot faster, so it's been pitched down. And so the original, if we played it at the original tempo, it'd be more like... It's more like that kind of speed. But that's not the only drum break. There's definitely like a... If we just listen a sec. 
I couldn't really recreate that. I did have a look through and I, I did a bit of a fudge. I used um, this break, fr Fuzzy Haskins. And I know it's not that, but it, it lends a little bit of the, of the energy of that. So we've got just a little fill and then we drop in with those things. So what have we got going on here? The main synth continuing. We've got all of the drums coming in, but uh, the big difference is we have the bass coming in like this. Um, I just used this, I sampled my MC-707, but it, it was a preset of a SH-101. <laughs> this, the sound hasn't got a, that unique a character, so I think it sounds pretty good. And this is the, the pattern which I could hear. It's maybe a little bit too bassy, I might roll off a little bit of bass. And maybe even I might roll off some top. But I think that's I think that's it. Let's listen to that. Let's listen to the original a sec. And let's listen to mine. It's pretty close, I would say. So we're getting them. Next up, we have the beautiful guitar coming in. Let's listen to the original. You can hear the breakbeat in that bit. Please, if you have any idea what that is, please tell me. I'd love to know because I'd get it would bring this so much closer to the original. Even if I knew what snare it was, I could like program it in. I might even do that now. Just get something vaguely similar. Let's have a quick try. I mean, even with a 707 kit, we might be able to get something a bit. I mean, that's quite a different snare, but even that, to me, that, that helps. Do we have a clap? And that clap isn't quite right, but if we maybe pitch it down a little bit. It's a little bit closer. I'm quite happy. So then we have the classic ill 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 ill, Ill, Ill <laughs> section. So let's have a listen. Here's my version. So we've got that coming in. So we've got I put it into a sampler. So we've got this. Little fluffy clouds in them. Little fluffy clouds in them. And then we've got this. Little 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 fluffy clouds in them. So that's pretty close. So I think they're just gone going up a semitone and just it's a matter of getting this exactly in the right place. Little 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 So if it was here. Fluffy cloud little little fluff head little fluff head little fluff little fluff little fluff little 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 fluff. We've also got a second synth sound. I made this again on the SH101. I wasn't quite as pleased as I was with the main synth sound, but I think it's quite close. To get this sound, it, it, it's changing quite a lot. I'm pretty sure what they would have done is recorded quite a long jam onto, probably onto tape. I tried to do it with an LFO, but it, I, I feel like it wasn't quite right. So this is, let's have a, just a little listen. <laughs> Because you can kind of hear in the original, it, it the filter's coming up and down. So it's like, but it, I, I think it's the same sound, just with the filter low and then high. 
I I feel like it's probably he, he used an LFO. I got closer by manually doing it, so I think I just did it from about here. Little fluffy clothes. Little fluffy clothes. Little, little. So it's a fairly simple patch. Um, there's a little bit of portamento making the notes glide. Wow. They don't step. They don't go da da da. They go wow. Again, I'm pretty sure I've read that they used a lot of effects, like even tide effects and stuff. I've really researched as much as I can, but I can't find um, anything that specific. I tried with this um, some sound toys effects, a um, bit of automatic panning, bit of phasing. This is a little bit of drive just to warm it up a bit, but yeah, it's not that close, but it's it's in the ballpark. So next. What were the skies like when you were young? They went on trip. So we're dropping everything out apart from the kick drum. The vocal is going back to the beginning. And we've got this sound. What were the skies like? Da, 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 da. I I couldn't find this. Again, if you know what synth that is or what sample that is, please let me know. I found something vaguely similar. It's not the same sound. If I had the right sample, it would be pretty bang on. What were the skies like when you were young? They ran on forever. When I, we lived in Arizona, the skies always had little fluffy clouds. Okay, and then we've got this. They were long. So then we've just got the beats coming in. And, uh, they were long, clear. There were lots of stars. And the original. And it would all turn. It, they were beautiful. The most beautiful skies, as a matter of fact. Rain, and it would all turn. It, they were beautiful. The most beautiful skies, as a matter of fact. Uh, the sunsets were purple and red and yellow. So yeah, I forgot to mention really about this electric counterpoint. Let's have a look at the original track actually. So this is electric counterpoint three fast. <laughs> Rhythmically, it's very complex. So getting it to fit in, this is why I'm pretty sure they actually based the track kind of around this. So one thing they had to do, and I, re I read Chris Thrash Weston talking about how he had to make this fit. He had to add another bar, because I think this is in three, four. Again, we go into the sampler, we have two sections. So we need that extra. Otherwise, it'll be in three, four, be a different time signature. So we've got just got that, and then we've got a chop. So we've got another section where I just. So it's all. It's kind of great because it's quite low tech, like getting it in time is really just a matter of playing with the sample starts and working out the tempo. I'm, as I say, I'm sure this is why this is uh, 105 BPM. And I don't think they did much to the sum because it doesn't really need much. It sounds, it just sounds great, doesn't it? So yeah, we've got two. So we've got this part and the chop. Then we've got the second section. And again, it's got needs a chop. So it looks like this in the sampler. So again, this is kind of like a repeat of this last section. Except for this time, we've got the main synth as well as the second synth. I think maybe I don't like those effects. Fluffy clouds. Fluffy clouds. 
So then we drop out. To, yeah, when I, we lived in Arizona. So we just got the kick drum, the sample, and the lovely Steve Reich. Yeah, when I, we lived in Arizona, and the skies always had little fluffy clouds in them, and uh, they were long and clear, and there were lots of stars. Dark. With this hat, I've just it's just got half a bar, then it cuts out, half a bar, then it cuts out. So with the sample, I just used a clip envelope in Ableton. When I we lived in Arizona, and the skies always had little fluffy clouds. The drums come in. Lots of stars at night. Nine. And then it just drops it. The, the beats and the bass. I don't know about you, but the way they've used the sample and the rhythm of it, it's it kind of feels like it could only be that way. Like, of course, it's basically chance. They haven't really done a lot to to manipulate the timing of the of the sample. But because it's such an iconic track, it just sounds so right, and the and the movement of it, and to me that's quite interesting how how iconic it is, I guess. Uh, the sunsets were purple and red and yellow and on fire, and the clouds would catch the colors everywhere. That's it, neat because I used to look at them all the time. You don't see that. You might still see it in the desert. And then we just have. So then basically we're, we're winding down to the end of the track now. Not a lot more happens. Got the main synth, the second synth, all the drums in, the bass line going. We don't have the Steve Reich sample. There's a few extra things going on in the track. Um, there's the sample layering different sounds on top of each other. According to my research, that is uh, one of the makers of the track, Alex Patterson, talking about sampling, I guess. Um, so he sampled himself, which is uh, quite cool. There's also quite a lot of other sound effects, like I mentioned the plane going overhead, and as we get towards the end of the track, there's all sorts of things, and it sounds like some of the samples are pitched, rising up, and apparently there are some Lee Scratch Perry samples, or there's a sample of Lee Scratch Perry in there, but um, it's so manipulated and buried in the mix that I, I, I didn't feel like searching through the whole of his back catalogue to try and find it. So there we have it, Little Fluffy Clouds. Um, please let me know if you can give me any extra insight into how that was made, what sounds were used, any samples that were used. I wish I could find that drum break. So join me next time looking at the track Melt by Leftfield, one of my favourites. Hit subscribe if you want to see that and see you in the next video. Cheers.